It's 4 o'clock on a Monday, and you know what that means, don't you? It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. Yeah, baby. We are back. I am back. The show, the live show is back. Let's make sure I'm actually broadcasting. There I am. Awesome. All is good. Welcome to the big show. It's been a while. Hope you guys liked all those pre-taped ones I did before I left town. Um, today we are going to do You Are In The A&R Hot Seat. Haven't done one of those in a while. Uh, and uh, curious to see how it goes. Never know. Sometimes we're a little surprised. More often than not, we tend to, uh, even the audience agrees with the screeners. But let's find out. Um, I'm a little bit, I'm worried a little bit because I haven't done this in a while. I'm a little out of practice. And it shows the CPU usage is at 3%. Normally it's at like 6% or 7 or 8 or 9. Um, and I think that they tweak the software so it would burn a little less uh, CPU. So I'm hoping that's the case. So far, so good. I'm broadcasting, right? Anyway, hi guys and gals. Um, all right, so we are doing two listings today. We are going to listen to forwards and returns from listing S is in Sam. 240317 VV, which is Christmas songs in any genre. And we're also going to listen to some feel good acoustic bass instrumental cues that came in uh, and were screened for listing number S2403 07 LH. I don't know what LH stands for. <laughs> um, that's funny. Back when I used to write those numbers up, I always made the uh, suffixes kind of match like, you know, acoustic bass. It would have been AB or acoustic instrumental, AI, LH. Wonder what that is. No idea. Anyway, great to see you guys. Glad to be back. I am still stupidly jet lagged and totally capable of making mistakes today, but I promise it'll still be a good show. Um, Left-handed bass players only. There you go, Andre. <laughs> so, let me pull up some music here. Oh, come on. Don't not cooperate. Um, let's take a quick vote. Would you guys rather start out with Christmas songs in any genre or the acoustic uh, instrumental cues? So, uh, if you want to start out with the Christmas songs, uh, type in Christmas and if you want to start out with uh, cues, type in cues. We'll do a quick check. Let's get Christmas out of the way. That's the spirits and chief engineer. <laughs> Santa Claus is not coming to your house this year. If he does, you're getting cold. Boy, you guys, most of you want to do the cues. That's yeah, some, some Christmas coming through a little late in the game here. Good to see all you guys in the room. Uh, man, it's a toss-up. Really a toss-up. Anyway, uh, let's start with the Christmas just because it's on the top of the stack here. Um, I can get this a little closer to myself. So I'm not going to announce the names of the taxi members. Um, I don't have a coin. <laughs> so Kent Walsh has got a coin. I don't. Uh, I can't remember the last time I had a coin in my pocket. Uh, I want to sanitize my hands every time I touch a coin now, post-COVID. Um, what was I going to say about this thing? Okay, so I'm not going to talk. Uh, we're not going to mention any names because we don't want anybody's feelings to be hurt. Um, so we're just going to say the song titles and have a listen, and then we'll take a vote. And Liz will total up the votes for those of you who are new at this. Um, Liz will total up the votes and we will see if you guys agreed with the screener or not. John Pearson in the house and Betty Anderson. That's funny. Uh, Deb and I were talking about you a week or so ago, Betty. So hope your ears were burning. All right. Uh, first one we've got here is a song called... Alone at Christmas. Let's have a listen and hope all the tech is right. Alone at 
I told you guys I'm really jet lagged. They probably shouldn't have done a show today, but uh, I should have read the listing first. Andre pointed that out, but I didn't want to stop the song. Um, and also want to let you guys know that if you think it's wonderful and should be forwarded, don't say so because we haven't done the voting yet. So I'm going to read the, the, what the listing said now and then have you guys vote. Um, sorry about that. All right, the listing asked for, said tons of original Christmas songs in a wide range of styles with male or female vocals are needed by a very active production music library with a lot of placements on major networks. Company is searching for really wide stylistic range of songs that could be found on a Christmas playlist with the following references. Dear Santa by One Republic, All I Really Want for Christmas by Little John and Kool-Aid Man, Christmas Time, Don't Let the Bells End by The Darkness. Um, and Backdoor Santa by Clarence Carter. Um, quoting the company, we're looking for Christmas songs in any genre, and when we say any genre, we mean Latin, Celtic, folk, hip-hop, UK drill, or UK, I think that's supposed to be UK drill, uh, 
rock and so on. Um, so pretty much anything goes that, you know, like a genre you would see listed in Billboard or Spotify. Um, please submit original well-crafted Christmas songs in your genre of choice, but please be sure they're easily recognizable as Christmas themed. Uh, your submission should have festive melodies, engaging rhythms and beats, and lots of holiday spirit. Since the listing is open to a wide variety of genres, uh, instrumentation may vary based on which direction you go, as long as your submissions are competitive with other songs um, in your chosen style. Please be sure that any virtual instruments or samples you use are high quality and appropriate for the style of your songs. Expressive and well-performed vocals are key. Um, wow, it's a long one. N uh, note, we know the scope of this listing is big, but please make sure that your songs don't stray too far outside the commercial lanes. That's what I was talking about before. Anything that veers too far into experimental sounds and genres or abstract musical ideas likely won't work for this request. Uh, lyrics should avoid references to specific names, dates, times, places, brands. Uh, uh, it should, oh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> profanities later. So if you want to talk about effing Christmas, I guess that's okay as long as you talk about it later. Uh, unless there, you can talk about places if they're Christmas related, like going to Granny's house for Christmas dinner, I guess. Uh, Santa, the North Pole, December 25th. So yeah, that's all kosher. Um, do not copy the references in any way, shape, or form. Use them only as a general guide for tempo, tone, overall vibe. We all know that. Do not submit any material with unauthorized samples of any other artist's music, sounds, or any other form of media. Broadcast quality is needed. Uh, exclusive 50-50 deal. Uh, so anyway, um, there you go. Now that we know that, uh, if you guys would forward type in the letter F, I can't remember which one of you thought of that last time we did this rather than typing a plus one for a forward, but letter F is better. And if you would return it, type in the letter R and Liz will tally them up. So here we go. And while you're typing away, I want to address, I didn't listen to it before. I've only listened to like tiny little bits and pieces of these before the show today. I didn't realize that this one, um, had the ambient background noise, you know, like a Christmas gathering. Um, and frankly, that leads me to believe that maybe the screener didn't listen all the way through and catch that because that's a big no-no in the land of sync. Having any sort of sound effect in your track makes it unusable. Um, it should have just been, a, you know, a, a button ending, a stinger ending at the end of that. Be easy to edit. Maybe the screener did listen that far and actually thought to him or herself, well, they can easily fix that. Um, so, I don't know. I'm curious. I have to find out who the screener was. And uh, I actually had Liz print out the critiques for the stuff that was returned, figuring that you guys might say, well, why did the screener return it? But didn't have Liz print out the um, things about forwards because nobody ever questioned the forward. <laughs> so... Uh, I'll deal with that after the show, but yeah, uh, I mean, sometimes people will put rain or wind or other sound effects in, and it makes it unusable for a TV show because they're going to add their own stuff. Uh, what if they want to use your song and you've got rain and the scene they're going to use it in is a perfectly sunny day with no rain, so just something to remember. All right, so we had... 22 forwards and 12 returns. The forwards are the winners. That was, in fact, a forward. Um, I'm surprised. Uh, for the folks who would have returned it, um, would you have returned it because of the ambient talking at the end, or were there other reasons? Go ahead and type in your answers. I'm a little curious. Yes, the show's live, Edmund. I know, I did such a good job of putting together those pre-tape shows before I left town that you had no idea, right? <laughs> yeah. Wow, Ken Crombie said it was too big sounding. Thank you, Edmund. Hmm. 
Betty couldn't hear the lyrics. Too much ambience. Ending seemed a little stretched. Did it say that it couldn't be dated sounding? I mean, this did sound pretty traditional. Um, I'll give you that. Um, it talked about the samples and sounds. Um, oh, I'm looking for... I'm doing a quick scan. Yeah, it doesn't say uh, that it's got to be contemporary or modern sounding, I don't think, unless I'm overlooking that, but I don't think that I am. Um, it just needs to be competitive with other songs in that chosen style. Um, what would you say the style of that was? I can't, there's a word that I can't think of. It's almost anthemic, but that's not the right word. Andre points out that it almost sounds like a Christmas song from the Wham era. It does. Uh, or Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Hallmark movie style, 80s sounding. Yeah, all that is kind of true. I think it's a very usable track. If I were the screener, I would have forwarded that. Definitely. Um, all right. Well, good job for the 22 of you who nailed it. And I excuse the majority of the 12 of you who would have returned it based on the talking at the end because that would be a legitimate reason. Um Although, if I were personally screening that, I would have forwarded it and we would have included a note that says we, we're aware that there's ambient crowd noise at the end of this thing um, sure that if you want to sign the uh, this thing to your library you could edit that off or have the artist edit it off anyway good job on that one all right this one is called get git get some christmas spirits let's have a listen It's time to have a Christmas party. Break out the eggnog and booze. <laughs> Loosen up, dude. Don't you be no Scrooge. Gotta get some Christmas spirits. Just let the happy season warm you. Break out the eggnog and booze. Ho, ho, ho. Loosen up, dude. Let's toss down a few. Ain't you got the Christmas spirit? Christmas spirits. 
the drill, F if you would forward it, R if you would return it. I am dying to see what you do on this one. Because you are in the A&R hot seat. And while you are putting your thoughts down there, um, man, earbuds. Uh, I've had these for probably 10 years. They're Samsungs. They came with a phone. I happen to like them. They're very comfortable, reasonably good frequency response. But man, oh man, if you turn those things a 32nd of an inch one way or the other, the frequency curve, the response just goes right out the window. Um, Oh, what were the ones that I had on the show a couple of months ago? I took those with me on the flight, and uh, I've got to say they're amazing sounding, and I'm just at a total loss because I am jet-lagged and brain-dead. Flare, thank you. The Flare's amazing. I love them. Did anybody else end up buying those things? Uh, by the way, I didn't make a penny off of that recommendation. That was strictly because I was so completely and utterly blown away by them. Yep, The British Scientist. Sounds like a movie title. I got the calmer ones. Yeah, they actually, I bought some calmers probably in the beginning of the COVID lockdown and didn't really use them right. Um, and then they sent me along with the headphones a, a upgraded pair of calmers. Um, and I put them in one day for like eight hours. You can feel a difference. Uh, here, let me look up which model I got. I got the, uh, here. Flare Audio E-Prototypes. Um, the technology is like idiotically simple, but it took this guy to figure it out. It's just the ear canal has a, a shape to it, and he just followed uh, the shape of your ear canal so that the sound actually gets pointed right at your eardrum and doesn't go through twists and turns before it gets there and adds distortion. So 15 forwards and 18 returns. Wow. Um, it was, in fact, a return. And I'm a little surprised it got the forwards, but there was something charming about it. Um, somebody pointed out it's not very Christmassy except the lyrics. Well, lyrics do count. Um, and it doesn't have to have sleigh bells in it or Rudolph singing the chorus to make it Christmassy. Um, I could uh, imagine that song, that style of song, um, getting synced in like, you know, let's say there's, you know, a beer chugging college boy fraternity kind of movie. I could imagine something like that getting used in it. Um, for me personally, the ho, 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 even once was too much. Uh, it just took you right out of the song and using it for sync purposes, that would have made the viewers turn away from the the script, the dialogue, the action, and go, ooh, what was that? So that's not a good thing. Um, Wayne's World, there you go. Punk Christmas, probably too many ho-ho-hos, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Seeing where a band is playing that song at a Christmas party. Really good point. Um, anyway, um, yeah, uh, frankly, I, that is not so completely far off base, nor is the production so bad. It's not, it, it's like, it's like 70% there and just needs some refining. And I think that that is a affordable, um, song that is usable in sync. There are never enough hoes. Oh, come on. Now, there's frat boy humor for you. Um, yeah, the mix definitely needed some help. Song was cool and original. And it was catchy. Yeah, like I said, to me personally, um, as a retired screener who hasn't screened in about 20-some years, I, I 
I would have been on the fence with that because it had redeeming qualities and it did have something cool about it. It's just not ready for prime time yet. But um, back in the very early days of Taxi, when I had more time on my hands, kind of, um, I might have picked up the phone and called that member personally and said, man, you're so close. Try this, try that. Hopefully the screener did that. Oh, I could look and see what the screener said. Couldn't I? Screener said, I appreciate the riff idea and the top line character. Yep, agree with that. Fine tune, but the production could tie closer to a current commercial to tie closer to the reference tracks. In this case, I'd try for more current pop rock flavor. Um, production could be more current commercial. Um, song instrument sounds or samples sound dated or of a lower quality. So... Yeah, kind of what I said to some extent. It's just like there's something there, but just not nailing it yet. But if you're watching the show, person who did that song, take heed, have heart, <laughs> fix it, because it, there's something cool about it. All right. Now, moving on to a thing called Santa Santa. Okay, Santa Santa. Santa Santa, can you come now? I need to remember how. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care Santa, Santa, everything's cold and gray Not how I remember it back in the day When sleigh bells rang and I, I was dreaming of a white Christmas Santa, Santa, I'm so blue she doesn't believe I believe in you I'm cold, I'm jaded, that much is true But oh, Santa, I think I do remember you Santa, Santa, slide down my smokestack Drop me something special from your sack Some magic dust so she can see that Daughter and Blitzen mean a lot to me, oh Santa, Santa, I'm starting to remember you How excited I used to get for a cool you And I can see why she thinks I'm such a mean old Grinch Santa, Santa, I'm so blue She doesn't believe I believe in you I'm cold, I'm jaded, that much is true but oh, Santa, I sure do remember you Santa, Santa, I'm hearing you say A winter wonderland is not too far away By a diamond ring Get on your knee and ask her to be my Christmas bride. Santa, Santa, I'll take your advice. Cause old Saint Nick, he's always nice. And then we can spend our life rocking around that Christmas tree. Santa, Santa, I'm so jolly. Look at all the ivy and holly. She lit up like Rudolph's nose Yes, she said she'd marry me As long as I believe in Santa Claus And of course I do Cause Santa's the one who said to marry you
All right. Cast your votes. F for a forward, R for return. That was Santa Santa. Um, MMS. Uh, I saw that, you know, earlier you were talking about you're getting frustrated, you're not getting forwarded, um, but you get the dated, low-quality samples a lot. Um, this may have been, uh, I, I, I can talk about it now because I see all the R's coming in. <laughs> uh, <coughs> it's obvious when, when stuff sounds dated and old. Um, in this case, by the way, the level was considerably lower on this one than other ones. I had to really goose the fader on the mixer to get it up to a similar level. Um, but... You see, you know, it's easier to look at somebody else's thing and go, yeah, you know, uh, like the recording just wasn't that crisp or that modern sounding. It didn't have any fidelity to it. Well, there you go. Easier to spot on somebody else's work. But that's why we do these shows, because it makes you recognize stuff in your own that you might not be objective enough about. I don't think I'm going to rewatch this show anytime soon. I feel like me, 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 me. <laughs> Oh, man. I think I went to bed at 2 a.m. last night and woke up uh, at 5.15 this morning. So, yeah. Thirty-three returns and one forward. So, pretty unanimous. Um... And you guys agreed with the screener. The screener actually did return it. Double checking, yes. Let's see what the screener said. Um, song has great lyrics. Um, great work, Johnny. Uh, creating a more festive mood and melodies to help create a more obvious Christmas theme sound. Didn't hear the kind of festive melodies, easily recognizable Christmas sound that was requested. The mood is off target. The melody could be stronger. So, yeah, I, I think we all felt that way. That there, you know, it ha again, redeeming qualities. Um, and Zen Chief Engineer says, yeah, but my mom says my samples are great. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, you know, didn't suck. It's just not fully baked yet. It needs some help. Okay, let's move on and listen to another Christmas one. Um, this one is called Any Longer. And we found a hand to hold Will you let them lead you home? Let them lead you home Under the streetlight snow is falling Footsteps are quiet on the road I can't help but whisper thank you Stepped into the dark and found it home to do this on your own any longer than you want to. It's Christmas and we found a hand to hold. Will you let them lead you home? Let them lead you home. This Christmas snow's falling. You cover the scars in
that was called Any Longer. Uh, let's cast some votes. F for a forward, R for return. writing down a thought of my own. It's kind of amazing that I'm capable of having a cogent thought today. Um, And remember, um, for those of you, <coughs> those of you who are new to the show, um, this was for film and TV, um, for a production music library that gets placements on major networks. Um, I know the company; they do a great job. They get just a ton of placements. Um, so think about that. Um, I saw a lot of people talking about um, the vocals were over-compressed. Can you imagine the producer of a TV show hearing the song go, yeah, this is perfect for the scene, but the vocals sound a little over-compressed. Let's not use it. They're not engineers. They're not producers. They're looking for a song that enhances the emotion or the feeling or the vibe of a scene. So that's my point now that you guys are, are look to be done voting. Um, I was listening to it going, I can see the type, I could see the types of scenes it would work in. Um, just my own personal feeling. Uh, I would have forwarded that. Um, and apparently some of you agreed with me. 28 forwards, 19 returns. And that one was, in fact, a forward. Interesting that we're getting kind of a, a mixed vibe. Um, but, you know, um, I'm seeing more engineering-related comments in the chat today than normally, uh, which is interesting. Um, pretty darn good engineering and pretty darn good production um, are certainly like the lowest the bar will go. If a song is a great song, and I'm not talking about could it be a hit so much as could it be good in a scene? That's the bottom line. A library will sign it if they think their clients would hear it and go, I could use that in a scene. Um, uh, an editor working on a show, a music supervisor working on a show, um, an executive producer working on a show, a director working on a movie, would they hear it and go, that works? And you also have to think, in, if you're putting yourself in their shoes, think about the total context of it all. Um, if the song is going to be used as background source music where it's playing ostensibly off a jukebox that's 50 feet away in a bar scene um, or in a car radio underneath the two people in the front seat having a little dialogue. Um, you know, do, do vocals that are a little too compressed really matter? Not so much. Um, and I know somebody's gonna say, but your screener returned my thing and it said vocals were too compressed. You have to look at the whole thing that the screener sends and also look at the box in the upper right hand corner that says specifically, I returned or forwarded this song because so they may mention as a little side note, just because they're trying to be helpful, helpful that the vocals were a little over compressed, but it doesn't say I returned this because the vocals were a little over compressed. So, I know, you know, look, not, there is no exact science with any of this stuff. Um, I certainly would be a better screener. <laughs> Look at me. I'm bragging about me. I would be a be I would be a better screener today than I was 25 or 30 years ago at the beginning of this company. 
um, because I've learned so much more. Certainly I've learned a lot more about film and TV over the last many years um, and, and understand that in the context of film and TV, there are so many things. It's not a matter of I love that song or I don't love that song. It's do I love this song because it has a lot of possibilities of getting used? That's kind of where the bar is set. So maybe some of the minutia doesn't matter. Then again, minutia like, you know, the ambient crowd noise at the end of that other song. On one hand, it's minutia because it could easily be taken out of there. On the other hand, um, if that were in the middle of the song and couldn't be uh, edited out very easily, that would be a deal killer. So am I making sense? <laughs> it's just jet lag and Red Bull talking to you. Uh, Somebody keeps mentioning uh, Jillian, uh, or Jilly Jillian. <laughs> Jilly Gillahan uh, keeps talking about broadcast quality varies. Yeah, broadcast quality definitely varies. Um, Bob Dylan's broadcast quality is way different than, you know, Dua Lipa. Or is it Dua Lipa? I think it's Lipa, right? Because does it have one P? <laughs> Uh, question. Uh, anyone heard the 12 song album, A Christmas Gift for You, The Crystals, The Ronettes, Darlene Love, um, Bobby Socks, Blue Jeans, produced by the late Phil Spector? It is so good. Um, I don't think that I've heard the album, but I've heard many of the songs. Um, Peaches says I'm making sense, but that's because Peaches is like the nicest person. <laughs> She's a big kind to me. Oh, can I reach it? All right, I'm going off camera for a second to show you guys something. Speaking of Phil Spector and Christmas. I'll be back. I haven't run away. Ah, uh, here we go. So speaking of Phil Spector and Christmas, I actually used to get Christmas cards. <laughs> it's green. <laughs> I used to get Christmas cards from Phil Spector when he was in prison. How many people can say that they have an original signed Christmas card from Phil Spector? Actually, I've got a few of them. Excuse me. Um, so there you go. All right, let's listen to another Christmas song. And this one is called A Chris on A Kiss on Christmas. <laughs>
All right, cast your votes. F for a forward, R for return. And if you do an F, you have to do that little hand thing with it. The votes are still kind of rolling in. How are we doing on time? I got to get my button gear if I want to get in the instrumental stuff. All right, 34 forwards and six returns. And you know what? It was actually returned. And boy, I would have been totally on the fence with this one because I loved it as a song. Um, but when we got to the sax solo, the, the pitchiness was so bad in the sax solo that I was thinking, oh man, up till now I would have forwarded this bit. If we sent this to a library, they'd be like, guys, no. Um, they would have loved it too, but the sax solo was really problematic. And if the library gave it to somebody to put in a movie and they auditioned it, they would go, wow, how did that pitchiness get by you? Um, and that's what the screener talks about. And also the screener mentioned, I like the upbeat energy, but there were no, there was no, let's, I should just read what the Screener said, Screener said, I could hear a little more variety rhythmically to enhance the track. Yeah, it was just the same pattern um, all the way from um, top to bottom. Um, so it had things to fix, but the song itself and the vibe, I mean, talk about, yeah, Phil Spector, see-through Christmas card. There you go, see-through. The Ghost of Phil. Oh, his daughter signed it as well. Wow, this is from... 2007. There you go. I am going to Xerox off Phil Spector's um, signature and then put that on Christmas cards and send them to you guys this year. Uh, again, it was so, so close because of the song, the melody, the vocals. Um, just, it, it was so cool. Um, plus, it was over compressed. Um, Oh, Marion was stuck on a phone call. Marion, how dare you take a phone call during a taxi TV? <laughs> uh, and I'm curious. Um, on one hand, somebody said something about the track felt too stiff, and other people said, I like the feel. I think it was actually recorded some time ago, and it, it doesn't... You know what? There was one place where something was happening in the song, like a breakdown or something, and I could still hear um, the drums in the background, like they'd been muted, but they were leaking in through other mics. So I think it might have been a live drum track. I don't know. Anyway, um, there was a lot to love about that, but it still had problems. But you know, that's part of the role that Taxi plays is giving feedback to people, because if they just tweaked a couple things on this, 
I think this thing would get used a lot. Um, it did have good energy. Marion, I'm joking. <laughs> Poor Mary. She's like, Michael, it's hospital related. Marion, you don't have to. I was just kidding you. Uh, anyway, okay. Let's see what else we've got here. So I think we've made it through all the Christmas ones. And now... Did I make it through all the Christmas ones? No. Um, did I play this one already? So I've got one person saying no, I did. Two people say no, and Zen Chief Engineer says yes, I did. You don't have to do this on your own any longer than you I'm cross-eyed jet lag, so I can't be like this. Okay. Will you let him I think that's fine. Yeah. All right. Uh, I forgot to cross it off. Let's try this one. It's called It Happens. <laughs> Tis the season and the reason Christmas Day. Some of us may have to travel far away. There'll be smiles across the miles on Christmas Day. So bring out the holly, it's time to be jolly. We've waited and waited all year. Good people. People are gathering, enjoying a cup of good cheer. The goodies are baking, and friends are partaking. Our family members are here. They're all here. And somehow our troubles and cares drift like bubbles. Yeah, They're having this time of I don't want to influence the voting, but wow. You're listening to this show on a TV? 
I actually did that when I was out of town one day. I watched one of the episodes on like a 65-inch flat screen with just using the TV speakers. And I gotta say, the show sounded reasonably good. If I were a library owner and this was forwarded to me <clears throat> and I noticed that it lacked bottom and was overly bright, but the song is so good and the performance is so inspired, um, I would definitely pick up the phone, call this person, say, I love the song. Where's the bottom? Can you send me a mix with more bottom and, and less top? Because, um, I, I, again, I go back to, and if I were still screening today, I would be asking myself, um, is this usable? Does it have, are there a lot of types of scenes that this could work in? And hell yeah. Uh, 32 forwards, five returns, and yes, the screener forwarded this one. So 32 of you were right on the money. Um, I've got AKGs. Uh, ATH M50Xs. I like them, but they make my head feel like it's in a vice sometimes. Okay, so that was cool. Um, and don't forget, Liz reminded me while that was playing, that, and don't you guys forget, um, Robin Frederick's book with the transparent cover. <laughs> Short... <laughs> Shortcuts, I hope I didn't get COVID on an airplane. Uh, shortcuts to songwriting for film and TV. A masterfully written book that is so chock full of information, it's just downright scary. And I'm going to give away a copy of Demystifying the Cue by that handsome gentleman right there, Mr. Dean Crepane, who is a spectacularly talented guy and a good friend and everybody who knows him loves him. Um, oh, and the book is awesome. If you want to be in sync um, and you don't have that book, you need to get that book. I think that's a good point, uh, Stu Thaler says. I think it's mixed like an early 50s production or 60s production. Bass was never present in those recordings. That's a, a pretty darn good point. Um, it, it sounds of the era. So there's that. You know, that. let me go a little deeper dive on that um, thought. There are times that we get stuff that comes in that is supposed to be retro sounding, not just retro influence, but retro sounding. And the samples and the mix and the style of mixing, um, maybe even some melodic choices are, are so modern that it completely takes it out of the realm of believability for the era that you can tell they were going for. So there's that. Um, you know, it's not an exact science. And my favorite word is always context. So there you go. Easy for me to say, right? Because I ain't making the music. <laughs> All right. Uh, I believe that we are done with Christmas. And moving on now to the instrumental stuff. This will go a little faster because these tracks are shorter. Okay. Now that I've shuffled my papers in your headphones. This one. <clears throat> oh, I should read the listing. Feel good acoustic bass instrumental cues are needed by a very successful boutique music library that's distributed by Universal and has tons of credits in big films, countless TV shows, and commercials. Uh, this is a catalog that you want to be in. Please listen to the following examples the library CEO gave us to get yourself in the ballpark of what they need. Uh, quoting the library CEO, we're looking for cues that have a clear, lighthearted, and feel-good mood, warm, positive, and somewhat easygoing. Uh, we want to hear pieces with organic acoustic instrumentation that have a human touch. In my personal opinion, we don't hear enough of that these days. Please submit instrumental cues bursting with positive energy and feel good vibes all the way through. Even though library is asking for different sections, they only want cues that stick to one melodic idea throughout. 
<clears throat> layer your instrumentation in and out as your tracks progress to create that sense of build and forward momentum. Pay extra close attention to how this is done in the references. Um, instrumentation that's in general wheelhouse of the references will work best. Think acoustic guitar, ukulele, hand claps, glockenspiel, whistling, etc. Um, happy clappy. Please be sure that any virtual instruments or samples you use are high quality, blah, blah, blah. Uh, don't sound stiff or synthetic. The more your submissions sound like they're being performed by real musicians playing real instruments, the better. Some non-lyric uh, vocal parts like oohs and ahs could help um, add some extra carefree energy to your tracks. Not a requirement, just uh, an idea. Um, uh, advice directly from library CEO. This guy always gives us really good stuff to put in the listings. Um, many composers throw in way too many ideas are not focused on one central motif. They try to keep things interesting by adding new harmonic lines, melodies, and even improvisation instead of focusing on the production and textures. What I'm looking for is the form and structure of production music, but with the sound of commercial music. That's pretty good. What I'm looking for is the form and structure of production music, but with the sound of commercial music. He doesn't mean TV commercial music. He means um, music that's available commercially, like you'd hear on Spotify or the radio. Uh, put simply, keep it simple. We know that other libraries want to receive music with complementary A and B sections, but this library is not one of them. Stick with one central motif per submission. Uh, submission should be about two minutes long, non-faded button stinger endings, don't copy the references, broadcast quality, blah, blah, blah. Very detailed brief. And here is our first thing. Let's listen. This is called Carefree Sunshine. Okay, F for forward, R for return, and while you're voting, I will add that the whole happy clappy thing, um, it's been around for easily a decade, and you would think that it would have died because people in the industry, both in the library side, music supervisors I know, uh, friends of mine that do a lot of music for commercials, like nobody wants to touch Happy Clappy, but it's still around because it works. It just got overused like crazy, but I still hear it. Um, so I think that people still like it because nothing better has come along to supplant it. Nice to see all you guys in the chat room. 
I missed you. <laughs> Brad Cray, just hit me that all our lives were running away from an F. Here we're chasing for one. <laughs> That's true. Oh, thanks, Nance. Thanks, Martin. Um, yeah, I, I got plenty of Fs in my lifetime, just being honest. <laughs> oh, man. Years ago, a taxi member gave me a thing uh, that represented happy clappy. 39 forwards and four returns. Those of you who voted forward, you nailed it. All right, let's move on because I got to get my button gear. Um, next one is called Heading On Home. Cast your votes, F for a forward, R for a return. Not a lot of ambiguity from you guys on this one. Um, I'm not even going to have Liz total them up. It's obvious. It's like all returns. I haven't seen an F for a forward yet. Um, and, you know, I got to say, this is somebody who's probably new to production music just starting out. And I don't want him or her to get discouraged. This wasn't terrible. Is I think this person took the instruction a little bit too literally. And the goal was to not have a B section, have an A section all the way through out, but use adding and subtracting layers of instrumentation um, to make it feel like it's going somewhere, even though... I mean, this was incredibly linear from top to bottom. <clears throat> and um, it, it was linear in the arrangement as well. I mean, just what was in there, what, you know, stayed in there. Anyway, um, it's a start. So don't get discouraged. I'm not just saying that to be all butt kissy, but um, you did your best to follow the instruction, maybe took a little too literally, but hopefully you're watching the show and you're hearing other stuff and go, oh, I could do that. And that's where the bar is set. That's the purpose of these shows. So thank you for sending that in. Let us listen to another one. This one is called Smooth Joy.
All right. Curious to see how we vote on this one. Please cast your votes. F for a forward, R for a return, and cast your votes quickly. I definitely talked too much the first half of the show today, and we still have to do a giveaway, a couple of giveaways. Um, and I just realized, because we're giving away books that cost m way more than the books actually cost to buy, um, <laughs> we're not going to... Uh, allow people, uh, sadly, outside of the U.S. or Canada um, to participate because it sometimes costs us like $40 to send a, you know, $20 book. Um, all right, let's see where we went on this one. Ken has both books. Very smart man. Patrick Kelly wants bo both books. Don Galasso needs both books. I'm telling you, anybody does, we don't recommend books willy-nilly at Taxi. We recommend books that we've read, that we know a lot of members have read. Members have gotten incredibly good results um, from them. And uh, there are about a half a dozen books that I think are life-changing. And I don't want an update, Adobe. Stop that. It does that to me every time I use this, sh this laptop. All right, uh, 24 forwards and 20 returns. Um, this one was actually a return, and the screener said it does have an upbeat feel. Um, I think you can improve the song by sticking to one theme and developing it, which was what the uh, library owner emphatically implored people to do. Uh, this listing only want cue, wants cues that stick to one melodic idea throughout. Mix could use some improvement. This needs more compositional refinement and development in the production. In the production, um, it was a good idea. There was something cute, likable, and usable about it. It's not fully baked, and that's what Taxi does: is help you figure out how to make it more fully baked. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, this one's called A Good Morning. Ukulele time again.
know, some of you, I think three of you in recent memory there in the chat mentioned this would be good for a TV commercial. I think, yeah, uh, anybody that runs a happy clappy listing nowadays is looking for music for a TV commercial. So I do not disagree with you. And I'm seeing that the Fs are coming in in droves. So I will let you know right now that that one was in fact forwarded. Um, Okay, let's listen to one more. And if the person who created this next one um, is watching the show, the title on this one is called Joyful Promos. Um, I would work on that, <laughs> that title. It, it, it doesn't work. Um, it does tell you what it is, it's descriptive, but um, <laughs> we are effing a lot. Yes, we are. What the F? Excuse me. Um, so let's have a listen to Joyful Promos. forward R for return and I am going to address Brad Gray's question Michael Lasko how often do you hear in the first eight bars if it's a forward so many of these grab you so quickly just curious I don't screen anymore um, the screeners are required to listen to all elements um, that comes from back in the day when we used to do primarily songs for, for labels and such, um, where they had to listen to, it, you know, a, a verse, a chorus, a bridge. Um, and usually they would just keep listening. Uh, oftentimes they listen twice through because first time is to kind of catch the vibe. Second time is, oh, yeah, I need to go back and address this issue or that issue. So, um if they're listening to eight bars and doing a forward, then I would be extremely upset. And if they caught, got caught making that mistake a couple of times, they probably wouldn't work here for very long because train wrecks can happen after eight bars, and they do quite frequently. Um, frankly, I'm still wondering uh, on the one we heard earlier with the ambient talking in the background all the way at the end of that awesome song, if the screener got that far. I don't have the critique in front of me. So the screener, and sometimes we do make a note when we forward something, we may make a note, you know, we know this has this sound effect, but the song was so incredibly good and the sound effect could be edited. We're forwarding it to, because we know the people that we're running listings for at the companies and we know kind of what we can get away with or what they'll forgive. Um, so if the question, and I'm having a little bit of a hard time understanding, how often do you hear in the first eight bars 
if it's a forward. Uh, now, I guess I do understand the question. I mean, a lot of times, you know what happens in the first eight bars? You get hopeful. And that's speaking for me. And I think the other screeners may feel that way as well, but I don't know because I don't live in their heads. But you hear something good. A lot of times, you know, before eight bars, you, you know, almost instantly. And I would, I've had this discussion, it hasn't been 15, 20 years since I've had the discussion with the screener, but back in the day uh, when all the screeners were sitting in one room, people would pop off their headphones and go, check this out, guys, I got a winner. All of us, all of us all the time want to hear forwards. We delight in it. Um, nobody is looking. I think there's somewhat of a popular belief that the screener's looking for any reason they can to hold something back. Absolutely the opposite of reality they want to forward the material. So when you hear something that comes out of the gate really strong, you're sitting there, come on, come on. It's like rooting for a horse. Oh, it goes with my coming out of the gate strong uh, reference there. But you are, we, I think every screener that's ever worked here, um, we, we root for the win. And if you hear something, it sounds so promising, but right up front, you're really rooting for it. But you do have to listen all the way through because could be a horrible bridge, could be some sort of technical thing, a click, a pop, a dropout, um, could be a bad musical choice. Uh, there are many, many ways, as you well know, that things can go south. So we do have to listen all the way through, at least to all the elements. Um, okay. So did I tell you if that one was a... a forward or return it was a forward just in case you're wondering yeah that one was a forward um all right let's do some giveaways also if you guys could just take two minutes i would really appreciate it just stop back five minutes after the show and drop so forward 40 forwards five returns so you guys nailed it do the screeners listen to the show? I don't require them to. Um, some do, some don't, I'm sure. Uh, every year at the Road Rally, I do have screeners that surprise me by walking up and saying, oh, I, I saw the episode with Bobby Borg. Great show. It's like, wow, you guys actually watch this stuff? That's cool. Um, do screeners listen to the show? Yeah, you know... I couldn't even guess a percentage, but clearly some of them do. All right, let's give away some books. So how this is going to work is if you live in the United States or Canada, and we can actually afford to send you the book for less than uh, what the book costs, um, you can have one. But you got to win it. So here's how we go. Uh, you guys are going to type in a plus one. Um, only one plus one. Don't sit there and go bing, 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 bing. And, and Liz is going to go like this with her finger up and down the chat room and go bink and pick somebody. And hopefully that person is in the uh, United States or Canada. Um, and then we will send you the book. And so first one is going to be Dean Crepain's incredibly good book, Demystifying the Q. Um yeah, like I said, if you do uh, Fox River, like Fox River, Illinois, cause I grew up in Ottawa, Illinois, and the Fox River and the Illinois River actually met in beautiful downtown Ottawa, Illinois. You're in Geneva? We kicked your butt in football. No, I don't think we ever played Geneva. You guys were a little far away, but I had a friend in high school, college, somewhere back the, back in the day that lived in Geneva. Is Geneva the town that's got like a a cow statue in the town square? Am I imagining that? I mean, it's been like 50 years. Wow, you run a taxi company and you're a singer-songwriter and you live in Geneva, Illinois. Batavia, I remember, there was a Miss Illinois that came from Batavia one year when I was a kid. Jet Nichols, you're on the Fox River and McHenry, wow. It's a small world after all. Uh, 
John Granite wins Dean's book. Yay, John. Woo-hoo. All right. Uh, Liz will grab this and send it off to you. You should get it in about a week. And now we're going to give away a copy of the only book with the see-through cover. And you can see the pages are all clear plastic as well. That's actually because the color is the same color as the green screen behind me. Um, every once in a while, you guys say to me, where's that studio with the yellow speakers? It's Criteria Studios, legendary, amazing studio that I started my career at like 50 years ago. <clears throat> if you can believe that. Uh, in Miami, Florida, um, so many huge records like... Almond Brothers, Eat a Peach, um, Layla was recorded there, Bee Gees were recorded there, Eagles, one of these nights, Hotel California recorded there, on and on and on and on. <clears throat> anyway, I was very strong emotional attachment to it. And they were kind enough to send me a photo of Control Room A. I think they've got like eight or nine studios now. But uh, anyway, that's where I started my career, and I am grateful for that on a daily basis. Um, okay, so shortcuts to hit songwriting. Start uh, typing out those plus ones, and Liz will pick a winner. But after the show's over today, I would really appreciate if you guys would go into the comments and type in some ideas for next week's show, because I was sitting on my couch this weekend uh, in a state of, in a stupor, actually, trying to come up with a good idea for a show that I haven't done in a long time or have never done before. And if you, you drop a suggestion in there, hopefully it's one that I can do like an entire show on versus a question, or should I do a Ask Michael Anything show where I just sit there for 90 minutes and take a bunch of questions. Those are always end up being way better shows than I imagine that they would be, but you guys ask really good questions. How about a show uh, featuring songs about taxis? Um, Harry Chapin and Joni Mitchell come instantly to mind, but that's, <clears throat> it's not educational. I, I really, really prefer um, to have you guys leave the show going, wow, I learned something I didn't know today. More listening and review shows. And the winner is Stu Thaler for this copy of Robin Frederick's quite amazing books. It's the only book out there on how to write songs for film and TV versus instrumentals. So not only is it great topically, but it's written by a woman who is a master of her craft. And she blows me away every year. You know, I've known Robin for probably 17, 18, 19 years, something like that. And every year I introduce her at the road rally and I sit off to the side of the stage as she does her presentation. Or when I have her on Taxi TV episodes, she is so frigging good at what she does that it blows me away. Um, anyway, I want to say thanks for showing up. Sorry if I was a little goofy today. Like I said, I still need about two more days to get over the jet lag. Um, and I would much prefer to do a show when I've had more than three hours of sleep. So thank you all for being patient. Um, thanks, Carl. I'm glad to be back. And yeah, drop some ideas into the comments section after the show. We will see you next week for another life-changing, life-altering, world-shaking episode of Taxi TV Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>